Okay, how's it going, everybody? So first, I wanted to talk about some pipes. So um, what we're doing, if you've watched this far, then you're at the point where you're now ready. You've got your Flappy Bird um, flapping up and down. You've got the background image uh, scrolling, so it looks like it's flying. And now it's time to start doing collisions. So it's actually going to get pretty difficult. And I don't want to make this boring, but I want to try to explain stuff so that my students, at least, um, are learning the important parts of this and not just um, getting the code. So if you just want to copy and paste the code into your processing, um, I can just link that into the uh, description. But for now, let's just talk about the pipes. So first we're going to look for some pipes. I just look for Mario pipes. Um, what you want are some long ones. So you really want the neck to be very long. So actually any of these would work very well and they're like different colors. So that's a good one. So you wouldn't want to use these fat ones because what we're trying to do is we're trying to stretch this across the screen. Remember Flappy Bird has one on each side so you have a top and a bottom. So I looked for this one and this is the one I found. Um, I then opened up in GIMP and one thing about GIMP that I just want to talk about real fast is it's kind of weird to navigate but wherever your mouse pointer is if you scroll with your if you uh, do shift and then um, I'm sorry control and then mouse wheel so if you move your mouse wheel it'll zoom in or out depending on where you are. so sort of like a Google map or something so if you really want to get this into the like sc scrolled in and then you want this to be in the corner you'd actually go to that corner scroll out and it will go over there and then you can click it on the corner scroll in and that's just up to you that's just basically just the way it works so it gets a little bit weird to use GIMP and my students have just started using it so I kinda have to explain what we're doing um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add it um, we're going to add a layer. It's transparency. So there's the two main tabs you're going to use are image and layer. Okay, so we're going to go to transparency. And oh, I already added the alpha channel. So, but you would click that if it's not already clicked. If it's already there, then it's set up to be transparent. And then you're going to go to tools, selection tools. And I just like to use fuzzy select. Fuzzy select selects everything of the same color uh, that it's touching. So I can go ahead and delete that. And now. I can basically, uh, let's do another selection tools. I'm going to try to select just the edges, okay? Don't want to go any far. So remember, you don't want excess space. You can't do anything about this space that's in there, but you can get rid of as much as you can. So go ahead and crop to selection. So this space right here is going to remain. Um, but you want to get rid of, like, even that, like, it, part of me is just like OCD wants to get rid of that. But it actually doesn't matter since that's going to be off the screen anyway. So our, our game window will be something like this, right? So it'll be, it'll be, it will never go like that. So it doesn't matter what the bottom looks like as much as the top. Okay. So a couple things about this image right here. You'll notice the height of it is 700. And our game window is only 800. So we really want to make sure that we scale it to be an appropriate size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this image. And I'm going to make the height, um, I'm going to have two of them. So together, that would be, um, if I did two of these pipes, one up and one down, then basically I'm going to have 250 down here and then 250, that's 800. That only gives me 300 in between. So since I'm going to be moving these a little bit more than that, that's a good number. So 250 is what I'm going to stick with. Okay. So anyways, what we're going to do is before we start going to, into the game, I want to talk about how images and collisions because we're going to have these things scrolling across and maybe I could save it for another video. I don't want it just to be too long. But um, let me go ahead and try it, and then if this gets too long, I'll just um, do, I'll just do it a different one. So here's a little presentation I met I made for you guys. Whoop, not this. I want to do the whole presentation <sighs> from the beginning. <laughs> Sorry, technical difficulties. Okay, so collisions in Flappy Bird. Let's talk about this for a second. So collisions in Flappy Bird are not actually collisions. What you're going to do is you're going to pretend there's a collision by when two images get close enough to each other, they basically act as if there was a collision. So first of all, let's think about our pipes. We've already talked about creating them. So you're going to trim them, you're going to make them transparent, and you're going to do two images. One of them is going to be flipped upside down. So I haven't actually talked about that yet, but basically if you go into image, you can go to, I, there's no, this is a picture, so, but there will be a drop down, it'll say um, transform, and you can flip it vertically. And then you'll have two separate images. So I did bottom pipe and top pipe. That's what I called mine. 
and then of course scaling it to 25 percent of the window this is what it will look like when you get them on your screen now you'll notice they're a little bit offset I'll talk about that when I actually get there and I did mess up here you'll see the bottom of the pipe that's not what I want so I'll have to change that when I get to my real game but anyways when you plot these pipes what you need to be aware of is that the windows height is 800 okay the pipe height is 250 that's both of them but we also have so that's 500 total. We have a distance between them of 480 pixels. So what that means is that these right here, this space is going to be the only place where we're going to allow Flappy Bird to fly. And Flappy Bird is, in my case, Kirby, is actually going to be um, drawn by the top left corner, as are all the images. So all these images are, are plotted by the top left corner. That's the X and the Y of them. So we're going to have to keep track of not the center of the images, but on the top left. So it's important that you understand how this stuff works. If we were doing a ball, like I did before with the circle or the ellipse function, that plots it from the center. But for images, it plots them on the top left, just like the origin. Okay. So the one thing that's interesting to note is that Images are placed at the top left, but text later on when we start doing scores are 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 placed at the top left, a uh, bottom left. So that means the whatever you type in the string parameter for the text, the x and the y will be the bottom left corner, and the string will be above that. So it's kind of a little bit challenged to get used to that, but hopefully you'll remember that when we get to that part. So let's say we've got our pipes now and they're all kind of created and they're ready. Let's go ahead now and try to build them into our game. Okay, so let's pull up our processing game. So first of all, let me review where we're at. So I have already put these images in here. So I have a bottom pipe and a top pipe. I have a background image and I have Kirby. And I have this fox that I was using for a previous demo. I don't need that anymore, so I'll get rid of it. So these are the only images I have so far in my image folder. Okay, So we've got to load these images in there. So let's go ahead and declare them. So there are images, so I can just continue declaring up here. So I have top pipe and I have bottom pipe. Okay, and um, we're going to go ahead and load those. Um, let's see, um, bot pipe equals load image. And it was, what was it actually called? Um, bot pipe and top pipe. So bot pipe dot png and top pipe equals load image okay so just to make sure this works we've got it okay there's our flappy birds you see oh you know what else I want to show you I want you guys to make another change real fast and um, then I'll cut this up but instead of using mouse clicked let's use mouse pressed and the difference is mouse press occurs when you press down on the mouse and mouse clicked occurs when you release the mouse so if you use mouse click like I did in the previous this is a little bit nicer for me okay so that's what we're gonna do that Okay, so now let's go ahead and so so we've got them loaded and there's no errors there. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw these pipes and see um, what happens if they look like they're working. Oh, and by the way, oh man, this is all kind of a mess. Okay, so what does this thing do right here? This is my Kirby. So I'm going to cut this and I'm going to write void um, Kirby. I'll just call it Kirby. and then I'm going to paste that inside of there. Actually I'm going to call it Kirby Control because it does actually control the motion of Kirby. No, nah, nah, I'll just call it Kirby. It doesn't actually control the motion. It does move it but um, the mouse does the control. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, it, you know I'm doing this kind of real time at the same time I'm trying to record it so hopefully you're not like too annoyed. But basically the reason I wanted to do that is because I've been really trying hard to get my kids to do abstraction. So hiding their code in other places. I, I mentioned that on the first video when we did set BG so I should have done it for the second video. Now when I write this next code for the thing that's fine to write your code here but once you've got it working you should then 
hide it outside of their main loop in its own method. So that's kind of what I've done. So actually, this video is pretty long right now. So I'm just going to just draw it once to show you. So we'll do image and we'll do um, top pipe. And we'll place that at 0, 0, just to see what it looks like. And then we'll do image and we'll do bottom pipe at 0, 0. I like to space things out. And um, actually, let's do, since it's 250 um, tall, whoops, that's the X. This is the Y. Let's just do that just to see what it looks like. Okay, so there's the two images. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to space them out. So I'm going to make this, um, instead of 250, let's add 450 to that. So we'll make it 700. Okay, so that's pretty big. That's probably bigger than I need. So maybe we'll go with uh, 500. Okay, yeah, I can fit through there. I could, I could do that. Maybe that's even. Maybe we'll notch it all the way down to 480. And so basically, all I'm doing right now is just trying to figure out how far apart I want my pipes. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good. And I noticed that the bottom is. Um, is kind of like not where I want it to go because obviously that doesn't look very good but here's a little trick I'm gonna just change the height of my window to let's try 600 hey that's too little <coughs> excuse me let's try 650 um, that looks a little strange to me so I, I actually want it to be in the middle so let's do 620 this is all up to you, however you want it. Now, remember, these pipes are going to move, too, so they're not going to be just sitting there. But I think that looks pretty good, actually. So I'm going to stick with that for now. Okay? So right now, we've just got the pipes in. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to animate and have them collide. So hopefully you enjoyed this part, and you'll continue going, because the next one will be the actual animation of the pipes. All right. See you next time.